that was washed away, immersed and drowned forever. The water of your baptism day restored again whatever. Old Adam and his sin destroyed, and all our sinful selves employed according to our nature. In baptism we now put on Christ, our shame is fully covered. With all that he once sacrificed and freely for us suffered, for here the flood of his own blood now makes us holy, right, and good before our heavenly Father. O Christian, firmly hold this gift and give God thanks forever. It gives a power to uplift in all that you endeavor. When nothing else revives your soul, your baptism stands and makes you whole. And then in death completes you. bestowed on you forever. The congregation may be seated. The service can be followed along on page 268 in your hymnal if you would like. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the apostle Peter has written, baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and goodness and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to atone for the sins of the world, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. I never thought I would ask you this question. <laughs> how are you named? Janet Lorraine. Janet Lorraine. Receive the sign of the Holy Cross upon your forehead and over your heart to mark you as redeemed by Christ the crucified. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemn the unbelieving world to the blood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserve believing Noah and his family in souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his hosts in the Red Sea. Yet you led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be 
them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and bless them. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. We pray the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Janet Lorraine, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Receive this burning light to show that you have received Christ, who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ and be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which shall have no end. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family <coughs> and have granted Janet and Lorraine the new birth in the holy, in holy baptism, and made her a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as she has now become your child, you would keep her in her baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure, she may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your name, and finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. We continue with the divine service on page 167. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God will save us.
then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please rise. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of
be seated. The Old Testament reading this morning is from Genesis chapter 17, verses 1 through 7, and then verses 15 and 16. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram, I'm sorry, when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless, that I may make my covenant between me and you and may multiply you greatly. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, Behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be called Abraham, Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make you into nations, and kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you, and for your offspring, after you throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant, to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall become nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle this morning is from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace, grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one will dare even to die. But God shows his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if, while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yes, behind me, Satan, for you are not. 
may be seated. Jesus will not let the Christ be understood without the cross. 
You know, as soon as Peter confesses Jesus as the Christ, he begins right away to teach them again that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And when Peter, who had just made the good confession, received our Lord's praise, began afterward to rebuke Jesus about this, Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. Oh, wasn't that a little harsh? I mean, wasn't it just a little misunderstanding? Peter did believe in Jesus, didn't he? You can't believe in Jesus and not believe his words. You can't believe in Jesus and not in the cross. You'll have a different Jesus. Peter was resisting and denying Jesus' very purpose as the Christ. He was opposing the Father's plan. He was resisting the Father's love in sending his Son. He was opposing the only means for our salvation. So it was satanic. It is always devilish to have Jesus without the cross. A Christ without a cross is an antichrist. It is therefore necessary that we recognize all kinds of false preaching in the world about this and condemn it. You can recognize Christ without a cross if Jesus is only taught as an example for how you should live. If he's just a moral teacher and example. Now certainly Jesus can and should be seen as a kind of example, but if that is all he is, he is not your Christ. You will think that you're just here to progress and try to be a good person, but you will fail in God's judgment and go to hell for your sins. You can recognize a Christ without a cross if Jesus only has some nice sayings about love and helping your neighbor. Love and helping your neighbor are good things. But without a cross, it isn't even love. These works are not sanctified, not pleasing to God. They do not reflect God's love in Christ. They are not done in his name and for his glory, but for your own. And you will still enter judgment. You can recognize Christ without a cross if Jesus is taught as mostly wanting you to be a successful person. That he will reward you with all kinds of earthly happiness, money, a good job, friends, healing, and other kinds of earthly rewards for this life if you just follow certain instructions or have a strong enough faith. This is not a striving after Christ. You don't actually want Christ, but the things of this world and its idolatry. You will find all of these rewards burned up on the judgment and you will still be judged for your sins. You can recognize Christ without a cross if Jesus is simply here to forgive you but not actually save you. Maybe I need to explain this a little more. You see, people like the idea that Jesus forgives us because it gets us off the hook for our sins. That is, we can admit, hey, we're all sinners here and feel better because we're forgiven, but not actually repent of anything or change in any way. To want to be saved is to want to be saved from something. The something we want salvation from is bondage to sin. 
If you are still willfully committing sin and living contrary to God's commandments, you do not want to be saved. You do not want the real Jesus. You might want to feel good about your present condition and continue in your bondage, thinking that God will, in the end, he'll just take me to heaven. God loves you more than that. He wants to actually deliver you, not just say that he delivers you. He knows that your sins can never truly make you happy and never bring you the blessings you need. They will only separate you more and more from God and more and more from your neighbor. God wants to kill your sinful flesh. He wants to make you born again to live in his righteousness, innocence, and blessedness forever. He wants you to live in hope with a joyful and peaceful conscience. He wants you to be filled with his love. That means the old life needs to change. Daily dying to sin and rising to walk in the life of the Spirit. It's precisely for this kind of life that you are baptized. You know, there's some who come to me for their children to be baptized, but they don't really want Christ with his cross. They want some kind of false hope, they want some kind of false security or maybe tradition, but not a cross-shaped life for their child, dying to sin and rising with Christ. That's what baptism is for. They really don't want the new life of baptism and don't intend to nurture it going forward. They don't in ever intend to teach their child to deny himself or lose his life. They're going to raise that child to love his life, spoil himself, follow his desires, and the parents' whole lives will revolve around whatever he does, and it won't be going to church. Heaven forbid Jesus would demand the missing of a basketball tournament in order to hear his word or receive Holy Communion. Church will be convenient for whenever we need it. Jesus will be a convenient savior to save us from what he, we want him to save us from. Oh, I'm sure that's just what the Christian martyrs would say, wouldn't it? Jesus just wants you to be happy. Just go to church when you can. Certainly don't change your habits or anything like that. For this reason, Jesus did not teach in our reading today, if anyone would come after me, let him believe in me. Or whoever has faith will save his life. Now, of course, these words are objectively true. You are saved by faith alone. The question is, faith in what? True faith trusts in the salvation which Jesus came to give you through the cross. True faith wants Jesus as he is, not as we want him to be. You can't say you want Jesus' cross, but not your own. Faith in Jesus includes the desire to die and rise with him, however that might come about. That is, we actually want real salvation from sin, death, and the devil, not just some kind of salvation on your own terms. We want to be freed from our sins and for God's kingdom to rule our hearts and minds by the gospel. We want to be transformed into children of God and live in, with, and by the Holy Spirit. Some might wonder, oh, why should we want this? I mean, if it means repentance, 
denying ourselves what we want, rejection of the world, the attacks of the devil? Why shouldn't we run away from baptism as fast as our legs will take us? Because slavery to sin means in the long run, misery broken relationships with God and those around us, a life of unsatisfied desire, despair, fear, anger, and of course, eternal death. And because life with God means we have an eternal refuge from all that would harm us, we have God's unconditional love. We have contentment. We have a peaceful conscience. We have a holy calling and purpose. We have courage. We have a joyful spirit. We have a resurrection to eternal paradise with Christ and his holy church. And, as we learn from the epistle lesson, we're even blessed in our sufferings. As it says in Romans 5, that standing in God's grace by faith, we even rejoice in our sufferings. Why? Because God turns all those evils in life into a cross shape. What the devil wants to use to kill and destroy and cause you to despair, the Spirit uses to produce endurance which produces character, which produces hope. And hope, Paul says, never disappoints you because God's love is continuously being poured out over you through the Holy Spirit. Suffering kills the old life. It'll kill your pride. It'll kill your idols. And it'll draw you near to him who shed his blood for you, whose blood makes you holy, forgives you, and saves you. In today's reading from Genesis, God was not content to just let Abram be Abram, a happy, comfortable pagan in the land of Ur. He wasn't content with that. He wanted Abram to be Abraham the father of many, the father of the covenant, an heir of many, na a father of many nations and an heir of the promise of Christ. He wanted Sarai to be Sarah, the queen of the promise. Likewise, Jesus came to you and he was not content in just letting you be you. But he wanted to bestow on you in baptism his promises. He wanted to recreate you by his spirit so that you would be in his image. He wanted you brought into his holy family. He wanted to make you heirs of his eternal salvation. He wanted the resurrection for you. And so, when you're bearing your cross, remember that God isn't content to just let you be you. But he wants you more like Christ, who suffered for you, so that no cross would be forever. Remember, Christ is risen. If we have died with Christ, we will also live with him. Today's afflictions are momentary, and one day they will all be over. Until then, Christ has ascended to the Father in order to intercede for you. Jesus bore his cross alone so that you would never suffer alone. Rather, Christ prays for you and sends his angels to watch over you and minister to you. He gives you his church to support and encourage you. He sends you his spirit to cover you with his righteousness, comfort you and strengthen you. He pleads for you and gains the Father's pardon for all your sins. He defends you from the temptation of the devil with his word. He delivers you from all dangers and evil plans of this world. All this comes through his cross by which he redeemed you. He purchased and won you for God. 
And when Christ returns again on the last day, you will set aside your cross and gain a crown and reign with him forever. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please rise. We will confess the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may kneel for prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all Christians, that the Holy Spirit might enable us to deny ourselves, take up our crosses, and follow Christ through this troubled life into heaven, let us pray to the Lord. For the church, that all servants of the church may fulfill the ministries committed to them, and that we may boldly confess Christ before the world. Let us pray to the Lord. For Faith Lutheran Church in Valparaiso and their pastor Eric, that the gospel would flourish there and produce many disciples of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. For faith and perseverance, that we might neither shun our Lord's suffering nor our own, and that we might be delivered out of the hand of the wicked and redeemed from the grasp of the ruthless. Let us pray to the Lord. For all families, that even as God blessed and multiplied Abraham, all mothers with child might be protected and all fathers equipped to lead and raise their households in the fear and love of God. Let us pray to the Lord that the Lord to whom belongs all king kingship and rules over all nations would bless Joseph our president and all who govern us to rule wisely and in accord with his will. Let us pray to the Lord. For Brian, Karen, Nancy, Amber, James, George, Arnita, Jason and family, Alan, Ida, Scott, John, Jack, Matthew, Joyce, Gary, Betty, Charles, James, and the family and friends of Rita and John, and all in need of healing or comfort, that they may bear their crosses and endure to see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. For the birthdays of Thomas, Justin, Michael, and Richard, and the anniversary of James and Pamela, we give God thanks and ask that he would richly bless them through faith in Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. That the Lord would deepen our hunger for his table through our afflictions. That we may eat and drink Christ's body and blood and be satisfied with Christ's saving life, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, receive our praise for the confession of St. Peter that Jesus is the Christ. We rejoice that your Son builds his church upon this rock. 
and that the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. Keep us in this faith all our days, through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated. 
John Coleman passed away recently, and there will be a visitation at Cutler Funeral Home in La Porte uh, from 4 to 7 on Wednesday. And Thursday morning, also at Cutler, from 10 to 11, uh, with a service following. And uh, you are invited uh, to attend. Please take a look at the bulletin board for all kinds of things coming up, especially um, helping out with the Easter, uh, Easter breakfast and uh, bringing um, items for that. And um, yeah, let us join in singing. Oh, what is it? In? There it is. Hymn 429. 